Hey everybody, Chef AJ here. It's Wednesday. So before I begin, I just want to make sure that we actually have sound because after that debut episode of Weight Loss Wednesday, where I was talking brilliantly for six minutes and nobody can hear me, I always like to wait till a couple of you log on and tell me that you can hear me. Oh, I always just need one person to type in, yeah, I can hear you, and then we'll get started. I'll just mention that if you'd like to ask questions, please submit them through our mailing list which is www.eatonprocess.com. That is our website. You can also sign up to be on my mailing list and find out about all the cool things we do. We've got some scholarships for UWL coming up. We have the schedule of where I'm gonna be, maybe a town near you, so please sign up while you're there. Billy Reed can hear you. Oh, hi, Billy. You. Thank you, Billy. Okay, Tell that's all we need. Thank you. you so much, so we'll get started. And, you know, I know that you guys have lots of questions, and I do my best to answer them, but it's much easier if you can't submit them through the mailing list because it goes very fast, and my husband Charles is manning the iPhone. This is not done with a camera, by the way. It's done with a very small iPhone, and because it's done in real time, your questions go really fast, and it's really hard, so that's why... We prefer when you submit them in advance at eatonprocess.com. Kenny has the day off because he's coming for dinner tonight. And as always, Weight Loss Wednesdays are filmed before a live studio audience. Studio audience! Come back, studio audience! <laughs> There's our live studio audience. Hey, Bailey. Yeah, she's my number one fan. All right, great. Good girl. Okay, Bailey has no problems with uh, weight loss or weight management. So... Hi everybody, I'm Chef AJ and welcome to Weight Loss Wednesdays where I answer your questions about healthy, permanent, and sustainable weight loss. I am the author of Unprocessed, the host of a television show called Healthy Living with Chef AJ that airs on Foodie TV and the creator of the Ultimate Weight Loss Program. You seem like you're really, really close, Charles. Can you back up a little? I need my space to answer these questions. We got lots of questions. I need a little more space. Show my whole body, maybe, but uh, that's a little close. Thanks. All right, so great. So we're going to get started. Julie says she would like to know why the UWL program is cacao or cocoa free. I understand chocolate because of all the fat, but I'm not sure about the cacao and cocoa. Great question, Julie. Well, chocolate is 2,500 calories a pound. It's a high calorie and a high fat food. It also contains lots of caffeine theobromine, lots of chemicals that make your brain feel really good, which is what we're trying to avoid in the program that, you know, addresses food addiction. So, you know, my, my rule of thumb is if Dr. Goldhammer won't eat it, I won't eat it. And I used to love chocolate, don't get me wrong. I mean, I was a pastry chef for five years. I didn't use oil or sugar or salt and barely use flour, but I sure use lots of chocolate, especially cacao. Cacao has even more caffeine than cocoa. But here's the thing, so if we're in a program that's trying to reverse addictions, then we're going to omit all the addictive substances. And I know you could probably argue, well, there are some caffeine cocoa powders out there, that's true. But let me ask you this, Julie, what are you using the cocoa or the cacao for? Are you sprinkling on your steamed kale so that you can get more vegetables? Or are you using it to make a hyperpalatable treat, maybe often that involves things like sugar or flour or sugar or flour-like things like ground oats or dates? So that's the thing. So yeah, while it's not super high in calories, if you use a teaspoon of cocoa here and there, you know, a lot of people want to put in their oatmeal. Well, you know, why do you need it? That's what I would ask. And you know, Dr. Goldhammer doesn't even allow us to use cara powder at True North, where I'm going to be chefing or guest chefing for the holiday extravaganza that I go to every Christmas, safest place to be if you're a food addict in Santa Rosa, California. And carob is a pod, it's a Mediterranean pod, it's a fruit. And he doesn't even let us use that because he says it's a gateway to the use of chocolate. So, you know, if you're at your goal weight, if you're not suffering with cravings and still struggling with food addiction, you know, if you wanted to use a teaspoon here and there, I'm not, I'm not sure how you're gonna use it because it's extremely bitter. I mean, I don't know anybody that can eat chocolate or cocoa by itself without some kind of sweetener. So then the question is, what are you going to use for the sweetener? So again, we avoid it because it's addictive, it's a pleasure trap food, it's highly caloric, it's high fat, it generally perpetuates overeating in most people causing cravings. You know, when you eat like something with chocolate, do you then think, gosh, when am I going to get steamed kale again? No. So I would avoid it, and I know it's hard. I used to eat it every day, multiple times a day. My last day of chocolate was November 7, 2010, and trust me, life, especially if you're a food addict, is much better without it. And you know that it's difficult. If you have to ask questions like this, if you can't do without something, it's a good sign 
that it is either a trigger food or an addictive food for you. And I would refer you to, I believe, 65 teleclasses that I did on my other website, Healthy Tastes Online. I've interviewed Dr. Joan Ifland twice, and she talks about this, how in treating food addiction, we don't just avoid sugar, flour, alcohol, but also excessive salt, high fat, caffeine, chocolate, so nuts even, she'll say. So good question, and I know, uh, Addicts are always wanting to push the envelope and include these things, but it's really, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. There are some marginal antioxidant benefits, but you get more antioxidants from fruits and vegetables. So it perpetuates the cravings and the addictions, and most people aren't eating it in a healthful manner, like sprinkled on kale. So hopefully I answered your question. Thank you, Julie. Diane says that weight loss Wednesdays are incredibly motivating and says thank you. Thank you and wants to know if my upcoming book is about the Ultimate Weight Loss Program and can I give an overview of the contents and when we might expect it. Well, we'll have to ask my husband Charles when we'll expect it because it is written. He's editing it now. I'm guessing next year, Charles, the beginning of next year? Yes. At least in the first uh -huh. quarter. And yes, it's, it is about the Ultimate Weight Loss Program. It describes it, but it's also my story. And if you can't wait for the book to come out, I encourage you to go to YouTube or to Dr. McDougall's website and type in the search box from fat vegan to skinny bitch and you will get a glimpse into my story then. Diane also wants to know if an instant pot is mandatory for the ultimate weight loss program what my favorite dishes are that I make in it and what are my thoughts on the 5-2 diet. So there's three questions actually four so let me answer them one at a time. So no the instant pot is not mandatory on any program but it will make your life easier even if you don't need to lose weight or suffer from food addictions it's the best appliance out there. It replaces seven of your appliances it is a slow cooker, a pressure cooker, it has saute function, it's a rice cooker, it steams, it, it makes yogurt, I forget what the seventh function is, but it's all you really need. It has a stainless steel insert, unlike other pressure cookers which have a non-stick, and not everybody's comfortable with non-stick. If you go to the company's website, this won't work on Amazon, but at the company's website, www.instantpot, Dot com. If you use my name, AJ, not Chef AJ, just letter A, letter J, you get a $50 discount. If you don't already have one, or if you need another one, I recommend the A quart. You can steam six artichokes at once, but it just will make your life easier. Whatever version of a healthy diet you are considering, it's so much easier when you can save time and money using this one tool that literally does it all. You can make beans in less than 10 minutes. You can make steel cut oats, which normally take an hour in five minutes, and beans usually take two and a half hours on the stove. Like I said, I can steam, steam six artichokes in 10 minutes in this thing, corn on the cob in three minutes, potatoes in six minutes, soups and stews and chilies in, in, in always under 10 minutes. So it just makes your life easier. The food is delicious. While you're putting it in the Instant Pot, you walk your dog, you can take a bath. This is an electric pressure cooker, not a stovetop one, so you can leave with it on. So it's, of course it's not mandatory, but if people said I can only afford or have room, some people live in, I guess these tiny houses now, one appliance, it would, it would definitely be the Instant Pot. And I have two, I have the six quart and the eight quart. I love my Instant Pot so much that I travel with it. I don't leave home without it. I take it everywhere I go. That's how I'm able to eat healthy on the road. And I can cook my greens and my rice and my potatoes in my hotel room. So I totally recommend it. I've never met anybody that got one that really was unhappy with it. I think maybe one person wanted to return it. I don't know why they didn't like it. I don't think it was the Instant Pot. I think they just didn't want to use it. So what are my favorite dishes? Well, I make everything in it. We probably use it three, four, five times a day. So any of the recipes I show you on my 13 episodes of my television show, Healthy Living with Chef AJ, I do one episode, excuse me, I do one Instant Pot recipe every episode. Those are my favorite, but the fan favorites are things like the red lentil chili, the black bean mushroom chili, and a lot of these recipes you can get on my webinar series on my website at eatonprocess.com. Charles, what's your favorite thing in the Instant Pot? You uh, probably the morning vegetables. Yeah, he eats his vegetables. He, he steam his cruciferous crunch every morning. So what else? I mean, I, oh, my new soup that I debuted at last week's holiday webinar, the creamy curried kabocha squash soup. Probably the best recipe I've ever invented. It's the first time I've created something that both Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Lyle really love. And, you know, without the pressure cooker, I would have to roast that kabocha squash in the oven for an hour. With the pressure cooker, less than 10 minutes, I can roast, not roast, excuse me, pressure cook two kabocha squashes. I've got a new one, a 
smoky butternut bisque. So Instant Pot rocks. So what are my thoughts on the 5-2 diet? Well, that is intermittent fasting. And I would refer you to True North's website, healthpromoting.com, and an article written by the co-founder, Dr. Goldhammer's wife, Dr. Jennifer Morano, or listen to the interview I did with her on Healthy Taste Online. If one is gonna do ultimate fasting, I wouldn't have that be the first thing you do. If you're on the Ultimate Weight Loss Program and you're following it as designed, instead of your own interpretation of it, which often happens, and you have maybe those last 10 pounds to lose, then you might wanna try some form of intermittent fasting. But it, Oh, peace, oh sure. peace out, can someone tell me the website again? Of instantpot.com, I-N-S-T-A-N-T-P-O-T.com for the Instant Pot. For my teleclasses, it's Healthy Taste Online. And just to sign up for my website or submit questions, it's eatunprocessed.com. And so what I would do is first do the Ultimate Weight Loss Program. Do it to the best of your ability, do it for a while. And then if you're struggling with that last 10 pounds and you need to tighten the screws a little, consider intermittent fasting. But I would refer you to Dr. Morano's expertise. She's done it. She's an expert in this. She lectures on this at True North. And I wouldn't be the first, this wouldn't be, like for instance, if you're gonna do 5-2, you know, meaning I believe it's like two days of either no food or like a 500 calorie a day and five days of whatever you want. Well, that's crazy. Eat healthy so that you don't need to, to do this kind of uh, screw tightening thing. You know, it's not an excuse to eat poorly on five days because you're fasting on two. Thank you, Diane. Lisa says, thank you for all you do. Thank you, Lisa. And wants to know if you have a recommended reading list of books that support ultimate weight loss. And also wants to know what you think about colonics and what is your feeling about nutritional yeast? Do you think it's healthy? Do you use it? And if so, what are your favorite ways? Okay, so I'm gonna answer the colonic question first. I think I might have answered this on another episode. I can't remember, but I'll, I'll, I don't mind saying it again. Again, I'm not a doctor. I refer you to the doctors who are experts in this field of health and nutritional medicine. Dr. Michael Clapper at True North has a DVD which you can get on their website, healthpromoting.com, called Digestion Made Easy, and he talks about the efficacy of colonics. He's not a fan, none of the True North doctors are, However, he can make, he's made a case for like there's certain circumstances where you may want to get one. But here's the thing, you don't need a colonic to detoxify. You need to live your life in a healthful manner and eat health promoting foods, get enough sleep, get enough exercise so that you don't need to do extreme things like detoxify. You want to be whatever the opposite of detoxify is, what undetox, you want to be healthy all the time so that you don't need these drastic measures. So I have had colonics when I was at uh, Ultimate not ultimate, what's that called? The Optimum Health Institute, and they recommend them. They're, they're not pleasant, by the way. I don't know if they're necessarily harmful, but you know, you, doc, I would refer you to Dr. Clapper what he says because they actually can be harmful. So I am really pretty much not out of a fan unless you can give me some reasons why you think they're absolutely necessary. You want to live your life in a healthful manner so that you don't need to do these things, okay? So what do I think, what's my feeling about nutritional yeast? Do I think it's healthy? Do I use it? What is my favorite ways? Well, I think it's delicious, but I'm not sure it's healthy because Dr. Goldhammer is not a fan of it. He's my mentor. He's the reason I've been able to keep off these 50 pounds for the last five years. And he's one of the reasons that I was able to do it. Him and Dr. Lyle and Dr. McDougal, all three of them together are responsible for making me a skinny bitch. And he doesn't like it. He says it's a concentrated protein. It's a highly processed food not found in nature. It's high in protein, it's high in calories. And the problem is a lot of vegans, because they're not eating cheese and it's the closest thing to a cheese flavor, use it in mass quantities. So they'll do a recipe with like a whole cup of it in it or they'll use it every day or they can't eat their oats or their vegetables or their food without it. And he believes that there might be some evidence to show that it turns to glutamates or MSG you know, in the brain when you're eating it. He doesn't let us use it at True North. He feels that if people absolutely need it, a sprinkling as a condiment, it may be okay. And again, it's just like the question about cocoa. What are you using it for? Because when you have these foods that you just can't live without, that you feel you need to be satisfied, that's generally a problem, especially if you're a food addict and have that food addicted brain. So do I think it's healthy? I don't know. I so far, Dr. Goldhammer's not been wrong about anything, at least since I've known him, so I'm gonna err on the side of caution. But do I use it? Occasionally. As I write new recipes, I don't use it. But there are a few recipes in Unprocessed that have it. And the one that I do use occasionally is the faux parmesan. Now, the one in Unprocessed had nuts. I don't use nuts anymore. I make it differently. It's called Enlightened Faux Parmesan. But I'll use that. But I'll use a sprinkling. I'll use maybe a tablespoon for, for, for my, my whole serving. Or when I do use it in recipes, 
I don't use a whole cup like a lot of these fake cheese sauce recipes. I use a quarter cup or half a cup at the most for a huge recipe. Now, I know Dr. Furman has talked about the efficacy of this, that if we are gonna use nutritional yeast to get the unfortified, because the fortified contains folic acid, which is deleterious to our health when it's put in as a supplement, and that is often hard to find, at least at Whole Foods. I've seen it at Mother's. You might be able to find it at Sprouts or online. So my favorite way to use it is as a condiment, you know, a sprinkling here or there, but I try to write my recipes now where it's completely optional. Thank you, Lisa. Betty Lynn wonders why the starches that are listed are always rice, corn, beans, potatoes, and other grains. Aren't winter squashes like acorn or pumpkin, et cetera, in that group too? It is never mentioned. So I don't know if it, it, if it isn't counted in the starch group for satiation or just not used often enough. Anybody on there, Charles? Because no, it's so quiet. Oh, yes, I, but you, you haven't given me a chance to okay. say anything. Oh, um, sorry. Let, let me... Sambrana says hi. Hello. Um, it was so quiet. Angela thinks she's addicted to nutritional yeast. Yes, I think it's possible, Angela. I really do. Diana Cartas says howdy. Hi. And then the other ones have gone by already. All right. Well, you can always scroll down to find them again if you want. You know, Angela, I think that anytime there's a food where you just, you know, when you eat, when you eat food, you know, it should be pleasurable and you go, hmm, this is good. But when you go, oh, this is good, that food may be a problem. Linda Ferguson says hi from Connecticut. Connecticut. Hello. Teresa Bishop made the soup last night. Oh, nice. I hope she enjoyed uh, it. Karen L. Cantera says that's a cute sweater. Thank you. It's um, it's a I forget where it's from, but I have a lot of their clothes. But Lisa thank you. Irwin says hi from WSNC. I guess is that North Carolina. Lisa, I just I think you were the one that whose question I just asked, if I'm not mistaken. So back to Betty Lynn. So when I give my lecture, my PowerPoint, the secret to ultimate weight loss, I definitely do mentor, mention squashes, winter squashes. And depending on where a person lives, they may be available all year round or only part of the year. Some of them definitely only available seasonally. So there's three categories of starches or maybe more, but I classify them as in, in caloric density. So an increase in caloric density at 400 calories a pound, we have potatoes. We have sweet potatoes, and this is where the winter squashes lie. These are the foods lowest in caloric density of the starches. So this would be your acorn squash, your pumpkin, your butternut squash, Hubbard squash, delicato, kabocha, all these delicious winter squashes. So yes, they're very high in satiation, they're starch, and they're absolutely delicious. I mean, there's nothing like a kabocha squash, and nothing tastes like a kabocha squash, that texture or the sweetness, and they're great. It, I don't know why they don't have their own category, maybe because they're only available seasonally in some places. They're absolutely delicious, and they're high in satiation, probably the food highest in satiation, at least according to the satiety index, Dr. Susanna Holt, is the potato, actually the boiled potato. So I apologize if I don't mention them. I use them a lot. I, butter, I have recipes with butternut squash and with acorn squash in the holiday webinar stuff, acorn squash and kabocha squash, but they're Gail awesome. Gail Gordon says hi from North Carolina. Hello. Squeaks Buffeteria says she can't do without fresh greens. Well, wow, fantastic. The more you eat green, the more you'll be lean. Jesse Gurch says hello from SLC uh, What's SLC? UT. I'm not sure where that is. Jennifer Gillespie says hello from Maine. Hello, Maine. Marsha Whited said, says, also says hi from Maine. Hello, Maine. We got two Maines in the house. Lisa Mierau, I think I'm saying that, I don't know if I'm saying that right, says hi, AJ, love Bailey. Where's oh. her hat? Oh, <laughs> Bailey's not wearing her hat Teresa right now. Teresa Bishop liked your sweater. Well, thank you. All right. Um, Audrey uh, Hanna also loved your top. Well, great. Uh, Karen Cruz also loved your sweater. I wear a different top every week so that I know which episode it is. That's why. So terrific. We also heard from Kara O'Sullivan, Mandy Waters, Cynthia Krumlish, Heidi Anderson. All right. All right. And Tony Nassef. Okay. Billy Reed. Okay. Okay. All righty. Let me get going. We got another thing to shoot right after this. Wednesday's our busy day here because we do our holiday webinar. And by the way, if you're not signed up, you've only missed three. You can get the replay tonight at... Five o'clock, which is 90 minutes from now, you can still sign up and get the link. We are interviewing Dr. Alan Goldhammer on holiday survival strategies because tomorrow's Thanksgiving, a day responsible for more relapsing probably than almost any other day of the year. Maybe Halloween and Christmas and New Year's is up there. And we've got a lot of heavy hitters coming on, Dr. Pam Peek, Dr. Roger Gould, and of course, Dr. Doug Lyle. So consider getting that. You can get that in time for tonight's installment. Well, hi, Donna Weifert's here. Oh, hi, Donna. Hello. 
we were talking about cheese sauce. Donna makes a oh, great Kristen cheese sauce. Oh, Kristen Bummer says hi. Well, that's funny that Kristen Bummer says hi because I am asking her question right now. And by the way, speaking of Kristen Bummer, she has a blog called Beans Not Bambi. And she's hosting a giveaway right now to offer a free UWL scholarship for those in need that can't afford the program. We're actually going to be doing three in the next three months. That's why you want to make sure you sign up for my website so you'll notify of this. So if you go to beansnotbambi.com and follow the instructions and submit your like a little testimony, not, not a testimonial, but why you want the program. A winner is going to be picked probably at the end of this week or maybe this weekend, and you can join us. So Chris actually said that she has a friend who's interested in joining the Ultimate Weight Loss Program. The friend smokes and has a nasty Diet Coke addiction. Do I recommend she goes cold tofu and give everything up at once, or what should she give up first? And I this, this question baffled me, so I'm going to be asking it to Dr. Goldhammer tonight, and I also asked my colleague in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program who runs it with me, John Pierre, who's a nutritional and fitness guru. So I don't know. You know, because at first I thought when I said, well, gosh, I just assumed that nobody smoked anymore. I mean, I used to smoke, and I, I just didn't think anybody else did. At least they don't seem to in California. And I understand how addictive Diet Coke is because I actually had both these addictions. And so at first I thought, well, you know, if you're going to smoke, well, gee, why even bother eating healthy? Because that's like the worst probably habit you can have. And, then, you know, maybe there's maybe, you know, cocaine or meth or heroin is worse. But you know what I'm saying. It's so deleterious to your health that would it even matter? If, if you ate healthy. And I, I, I scoured around the medical literature and what I found was that Japanese men smoke a lot. They have a high rate of smoking. But because they also eat so many vegetables, which is what we do in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, they actually have a lower incident of lung cancer than people that smoke, that don't eat any vegetables. So what I would say is, regardless of what you do first, I still think it's a good idea to get immersed in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, because if you don't, you may not get this information that can change your life and save your life, because you're gonna be with a group of very supportive people that are on the same path. And so, I don't think it necessarily matters what you give up first. It depends on your personality. See, I'm an all or none, nothing person. Like, I remember when I had a Band-Aid stuck to a scab when I was 11 years old, I, it, you know, got stuck, so we couldn't remove the Band-Aid. And so we soaked it in the tub. I was living with my aunt at the time, and it just wouldn't come off. And when I was looking the other way, she, like, ripped it off really fast. And, of course, it bled, and, of course, it hurt. But, gosh, it would have hurt a lot more if she just tore that off deliberately, just a little bit of skin at a time. So it just depends. Some people kind of like to dabble and stick their toe in, but I'm thinking jump in. The water's fine because, you know, you're going to... If you know that that's your goal, why not do it all at once? Now, what would make this easier when you're giving up your addictions is to be in a state of complete rest. So where can you do that? Not usually at home. This is where True North can be very helpful because when people go there, whether it's to overcome an alcohol addiction or tobacco or uh, a caffeine addiction or, or food addiction, when you're fasting on water, this is a medically supervised therapeutic water only fasting center, which by the way, you can eat in the, in the True North uh, program. It does, you don't, not everyone there fasts, I've never fasted. It goes a lot easier, believe it or not, when you withhold everything and you can overcome this quicker. So that's what I would recommend as the first line of defense is get thee to True North as soon as possible and take care of this now before it's too late. If you absolutely can't do it, do the best you can. So, I mean, it's been, uh, you know, 30 years since I smoked. And I was very lucky because I broke my rib. And in 1985, when you had a broken rib, they taped you really, really tight. And I couldn't even take a normal inhalation, let alone inhaling on a cigarette. And after six weeks, you know, the... Uh, physical part of the addiction to nicotine that was gone and so I was really really I, I look at that as a fortunate thing that break it was literally a lucky break so it's been so long I can't remember how hard it was to try and if I even had attempts before that now I will tell you the getting off Diet Coke was really hard and I might make that the first thing you do in addition to following the food plan in the ultimate weight loss program you know if somebody comes to ultimate weight loss drinking coffee and they're drinking a cup of black coffee in the morning we don't necessarily tackle that first it's not the worst thing in the world it's bad if they're putting any kind of sugar real or fake in it or if they're putting cow pus i mean milk in it that's that's bad we got to get rid of that but the problem with diet coke is it's not just the caffeine the problem is the sweetener the aspartame and i encourage you to go to places like medscape or the Journal of American Medical Association, or one of those websites like PubMed, and look at the medical literature on aspartame. Thousands of things will come up about how deleterious it is. It, they believe it's linked to stroke. They believe it's linked to memory loss. It's 
horrible cognitive impairment. I remember, I believe it was the 80s, we had a local psychiatrist here in Los Angeles named Dr. David Viscott who hosted both a radio show and a television show and he was addicted to Diet Coke and as a medical doctor he said I believe this stuff causes dementia and Alzheimer's and he himself was experiencing memory loss until he stopped drinking it you know it's just that stuff is just the worst it's so addictive and my concern is and we've had people in ultimate weight loss that did not give up their Diet Coke and they struggled they struggled losing the weight they struggled staying compliant and they relapsed more than the other people and I believe it is because when you have a fake sugar like aspartame and I include stevia erythritol xylitol mannitol all these in the fake sugars because there's there stevia if it's the leaf is not fake but most people are doing the powders or liquid which are processed and all of these fake or zero calorie sweeteners go through the same refining process as drugs and alcohol and so do real sugars and real flours and so what happens is is they are just as addictive to your brain chemistry but the zero calorie sweeteners in my opinion are probably even worse than sugar because when you eat sugar it's an actual food it may not be healthy but it's four calories a gram and the taste bud on the tip of your tongue tastes sweet and your brain says oh good calories are coming but when it's the fake sugars, no calories come. And so what that does is it makes you hungrier, perpetuates cravings, and it perpetuates your desire for more sweets, which is why I think that if you're still drinking Coke and doing UWL, I'm not saying you can't do it, you're just making it more difficult. So all these are great goals to want to achieve, your friend. You know, you know her better than me. I'm the kind of person, I'd just rather get it all at once, you know, than have to suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer. Know what your goals are, know how fast you want to achieve them, come to the Ultimate Weight Loss Program because at least we can support you and if there's any way possible to go to True North, that would be the best way to do it. Okay. Deborah Chan is also watching. Hello. Joan Bedford. Hello. Um, Patricia Haas is, Hello. is watching from the UK. Patricia Haas, is she on the avocado fortune? Healy Lim is watching from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Hello. Oh, Jennifer Dyson is out I there. I know Jennifer. She's adorable. Tony she has those. Tony Nassef is there. Oh, Tony Nassef wants to know if you eat bread or pasta. Absolutely not. If you are a okay. food addict, you should not eat any refined complex carbohydrate, any type of flour, even whole grain, any type of bread, any type of pasta. Absolutely not. It's a weight gain food, not a weight loss food, and it's not good for the brain chemistry of those suffering from food addiction. So the answer is no. The pasta I eat is zucchini. So I would spiralize zucchini, it looks and tastes like pasta, or perhaps maybe some kelp noodles now and then, but no processed food. I refer you to my first book, Unprocessed, for more on that. Beverly Clough has been six weeks Diet Coke free. Excellent, you'll feel, let me tell you my little Diet Coke story, Beverly. So I was addicted to this crap, I was gonna say shit, but I don't wanna be rude to people that don't like swearing and I would drink whatever I don't know 48 ounces every single morning I would go to like one of the places to get it and I couldn't even wake up or function without it and my friend my best friend since September of 1971 Elaine was very concerned and she knew that I loved high top sneakers I wish I had time to run to the back room and show you these and I don't wear leather as 40 year vegan and she had a pair one of a kind pair of Batman high tops that were used in the movie Batman she worked for Warner Brothers and she said that if I could give up Diet Coke, I would get these shoes. And I was highly motivated to do some, because these are these are not only, I don't want to say they're antiques, but they're, they're unique. Nobody else has these shoes, and I wanted them so bad. So what I did is I went to Maui, and I sat on the beach for a week, and I was over my addiction. So it's getting warm in here, Charles. We almost, yeah, maybe you uh, can go put the air on. Kara mm -hmm. O'Sullivan says, about the question for the person who smokes and is addicted to Diet Coke, a dear friend of mine went plant-based a few months ago. He overcame a bad drinking problem, smoking pot Excellent. too often. Now he's reached a good weight and is feeling good, comma, he's going to, looks like tackle, and then it goes dot, 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 and yeah. I can't see anymore. Charles, I need you to please turn the air on, because otherwise I'm going to have to walk away from the camera, and I will go to the next. It's very hot here. Well, first of all, we're in Los Angeles, but we have lights, and so. Okay, Stina asks if the food is really going to taste better if I make it a month with no salt, oil, or sugar. The vegetables are tasting like mulch right now. Also, any chance you could do interviews with people who have been SOS free for an extended period of time so that we could better understand the process? Great question, Stina. And I actually have done plenty of interviews with people that have been SOS free for an extended period of time. One of my favorite people to interview who I'm interviewing tonight on this eight week holiday webinar series is Dr. Alan Goldhammer, my mentor. He has been SOS free since he was 16 years old and he's now almost 58 years old. I've also interviewed Dr. Doug Lyle, 
who is SOS free for as long as Dr. Goldhammer, Dr. Clapper, Dr. what's his name? I'm so sorry, Dr. Erwin Linsner, Dr. Jennifer Murano. So I've interviewed lots of people that are already SOS free. Now you'll say, okay, but what about lay people? Well, I'll start doing that if you like. I, I am doing a new series, it's a video series, it's sort of like my teleclass but on video and I've inter interviewed Heather Goodwin from the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, so that is a great suggestion and I will definitely do that. But if you want to better understand the process, let's talk about what the process is that you're asking about. And that process is neuroadaption, which is short for neurological adaptation. So it's just a fancy word for meaning getting used to something. So to give you an example, we went to see a movie called Arrival the other night, and we were late. And so when we entered the movie theater, we couldn't see. We couldn't find our seat. We have reserved seating at the theaters in, in Los Angeles. And so instead of screaming or asking for an usher, we just stood there quietly in the dark. And after a few moments, our eyes adjusted to the new level of darkness. And once again, we could see and we could find our seat. That's what neuroadaption is. Now, another example might be for someone that was raised drinking whole milk and like myself, whose parents at a certain point switched them to non-fat milk. Well, if you were raised drinking whole milk, the first time you drink non-fat milk, you go, this is, well, milk's disgusting, period, but I'm, this is maybe not the best analogy, but the idea is, is when you first drank that non-fat milk, it was very watery, and you were like, ugh, this tastes like water. But if your parents didn't relent and give in, and after a while, you got used to the taste of the non-fat milk, so much so that if you went to somebody else's house and they served you whole milk, you had the same reaction. Ugh. This tastes like paint, it's so thick. So that can happen with both our taste buds and our brain chemistry, but it takes time. How long it takes is a very individual thing, and it's based on many factors. First of all, how long have you been eating crap or processed food? I think sugar oil and salt is, is unhealthy. How long have you been eating it? What was the dose? Remember how Dr. Clapper says the poison is always in the dose. How much of that stuff were you eating? So that's gonna make a difference. Now here's the thing, we're genetically hardwired to prefer the taste of sugar, fat, and salt for survival. We actually have taste buds on our tongue for, for salt and sugar right at the tip. We're never gonna get over our desire for the sweet taste. I'm telling you that right now. You can be on UWL forever, you can be fasting for six weeks. We always will love the sweet taste because that nature put it there so that we would know to be able to differentiate the, the poisonous fruits from the non-poisonous fruits. The first taste that an infant gets is breast milk, which is inherently sweet, and amniotic fluid often leaks, and the, they're tasting this sweet fluid. So we're always gonna like sweet. But where did our ancestors get their sweet taste from? Well, they got it from nature, which is fruit. That was the only sweet thing available in nature. There was no maple syrup or agave or barley malt or stevia or erythritol or coconut sugar. None of that stuff existed. These are highly concentrated sweeteners that from an evolutionary standpoint, our brains cannot handle, neither can our bodies, as they're all not only very inflammatory, but they affect our microbiome and they're deleterious to that as well. So we wanna indulge our sweet taste, yes, with the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the whole fruit, but you could live the rest of your life on a clean diet, you're still gonna prefer the sweet taste and you're always going to like it, but you can learn to indulge it with just fruit. You know, here's the thing, so you know, dates, where do they fall? Well, if you're a food addict, they're 1,300 calories a pound, all dried fruit is, as opposed to like apples that are 200, and for most food addicts, I don't recommend it. Like, if somebody wants to put six dates in the red lentil chili recipe to balance the acidity of the tomato products, that's cool, some people can handle that, but I don't recommend those super sweet foods, even bananas sometimes for food addicts. So what happens is, is they, they finally get off sugar and so they're using like a less harmful thing and in the interim maybe dates and bananas are okay if you use them like methadone but you know it, again what are your goals how fast do you want to get there because for me I just want to be there yesterday right and if I had known this stuff I wouldn't have been overweight or obese for 52 years I would have done it I just didn't have the information until I went to True North Tony wants to know if you have specific times for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I don't, because I really am a believer that no one could have ever become overweight unless they ate outside of the demands of true hunger. So I believe in eating when hungry and stopping when full. And that is very hard for people to learn. People pay thousands of dollars to join programs that tell them to eat at specific times and weigh and measure their food. If that works for you, do it. I can't be 
uh, chained to a scale, neither a food scale or a scale that I step on. I travel for a living. There's no, almost no way I can do regular meal times. And plus, how can I have regular meal times? I work out in the morning. If I go to a spin class, then I'm going to be a lot hungrier than if I sit on my butt answering email all day. So no, I don't, I mean, I do tend to eat. I don't snack at all. I don't eat all day. I probably eat two to three times a day, but I don't say, well, breakfast is at seven, lunch is at 12, and dinner is at five, because what if I'm not hungry? I should force myself to eat when I'm not hungry? Couldn't have gotten fat if I didn't do that, so no, I don't. But let me finish this, because I'm on a roll here about, uh, so we, I think we covered sugar. If I didn't, I'd be happy to talk more about it next week, or if you're on, Stina, ask more specific questions. You say the vegetables are tasting like mulch. How do you know what mulch tastes like? I wanna know. So if you make it a month with no salt, oil, or sugar. Now here's the thing, if you're in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, you have the recipe guide, and there's some delicious recipes in there without oil, salt, and sugar that I've served to regular people, meaning people that aren't food addicts, people that aren't overweight, people that aren't even vegan, and they loved it. So why aren't you making the balsamic Dijon glazed Brussels sprouts or the oven roasted ratatouille? Those have no sugar, oil, salt, and they're absolutely delicious. When you roast vegetables, it doesn't matter what the vegetable is, even if you put nothing on it, it brings out the sweetness, it caramelizes them, they're delicious. So I don't see how you can say that roasted Brussels sprouts or oven roasted ratatouille tastes like mulch. Maybe if you're just you know, steaming Brussels sprouts plain or steamed kale, in which case there's always to make it taste better using those flavored reduced balsamic vinegars, maybe putting some unsweetened pineapple on your kale, there's ways to make it taste better. Now as far as the salt component is concerned, most people, if they really go 30 days without adding salt, by the way, most people get most of their salt, not from the salt shaker, but from processed food. There's more salt actually hidden in bread than there are in potato chips or french fries where the salt is on the surface. But most people, if they can go 30 days on day 31, this food tastes incredibly salty. So when you eat something like celery, when you eat chard, it tastes really salty. In the meantime, there's a whole world, myriad, herbs, fresh herbs and dried herbs and spices and things like Benson's Table Tasty that can really help. And if somebody really said, I can't down these vegetables without the tiniest sprinkling of salt, I didn't say this if Dr. Goldhammer's watching, then okay, whatever. But I'd much rather have them use something like raw coconut aminos or low sodium miso, which has like 95 milligrams of sodium instead of 2300. But the thing is, again, it goes back to that question about which addiction do we give up first? Do you want to pull the bandaid off fast or slow? So I recommend getting rid of all of it. And when your taste buds adjust, you actually prefer the taste of whole natural food. You can actually eat a piece of romaine lettuce and taste the sweetness and the saltiness. And you can eat a sweet potato and have an orgasm because it's a wine sweet potato and it tastes like cake. As long as you're adding chemicals to your food, and that's what sugar, oil, and salt are, are chemicals, you're never gonna get this full experience of neuroadaptation, in my opinion. And when you go to True North and you see people come off a water fast and literally have a when Harry met Sally orgasm when eating steamed zucchini as their first meal, you're like, I want what she's having. Now, as far as the oil, of sugar oil and salt, the oil's the easiest to give up, but it may take the longest to neuroadapt from. So in other words, if you're used to eating a high fat diet, either from a lot of oil or high fat animal products like cheese or maybe a lot of peanut butter or nuts and seeds and avocado, that can take as much, I've seen it as long as four months for this food to start tasting really good. So I'm sorry to say, but hey, you ate the crap all up until now, so now you just gotta do what Dr. Goldhammer says and suck it up. And I actually have a headband that says that, but I left it in the back room. Remind me to bring Shirley it is, is saying she's having a hard time eating the vegetables with nothing on them and wants to know if there's something she can put Shirley, on them Shirley, you don't safe. have to eat them plain. Put on Napa Valley Naturals, Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve, reduced age 25 years, 18 stars, uh, vinegar, we can get it at your natural food store, many markets. You can put on any of the designer vinegars, Bima and Pa, Bima, B-E-M-A-A-N-D-P-A-S dot com. Chef AJ, all one word, 10% off. You can put on mustard, you can put on oil-free dressings, you can put on so many things. Well, you Jennifer, don't... Jennifer suggests using Table Tasty. Oh, Benson's Table Tasty, amazing, especially their main Table Tasty, not all of the seasonings, but again, 10% off with Chef AJ. You don't ever have to eat your food plain, guys, but I will tell you that the longer you eat this way, you actually end up tending to prefer things simple and plain, but not that that is something to aspire to or a goal. You don't. This is not about suffering, it's not about deprivation. It's about 
eating the way that our ancestors ate throughout most of human history and how people in parts of the world that are free from all of our number one killers like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and autoimmune disease still eat today. It's about eating whole natural food, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. So it's not, you make the food taste as delicious as you want or as simple as you want, but I'll tell you, the longer you do this, the better the food tastes. You just need to give it time. You know, if ever, if you guys have a baby, some of you probably have had babies or have babies now, and that baby fell down when they tried to walk, would you say, oh, forget it, you can't walk, you may as well now try again? Well, it's the same thing with this. You have to keep trying. Not People don't generally quit smoking or drinking on the first time. You just have to keep trying, keep coming back, and it will taste better and better. And the, and the other thing about this neuroadaption is what happens, unfortunately, Stina, is people don't stick with it long enough. They relapse just before they're at the top of the mountain. And guess what? It's like it's like in AA when you've broken sobriety, you're back to day one. I don't know if you're necessarily back to day one because the more days of abstinence and compliance you string together, the better it's gonna be. But if you can just stick with it and use the tools we give in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program and, and, and work on the emotional aspect of why you're eating the try to get through these as quickly as I can. Panina said she heard that if you eat a salad without fat, you don't fully absorb the phytonutrients and doesn't know what to do. So Panina, here's the thing. I, one of the greatest moments of my professional career was speaking at the McDougal Advanced Study Weekend and also speaking several times to like 300 doctors at Kaiser. And I asked them, I said, have you guys ever treated a patient because of poor micronutrient absorption? Now here's the thing, we have an epidemic of obesity, heart disease, cancer, diabetes in this country. 75% of Americans are overweight, that number is growing, and more than half of those are obese. And it is not because they did not absorb the nutrients in their salad. Now I'm not saying that it's not important, but let's not major in minor things. Let's get the food right, let's reverse the heart disease, let's get the weight off. And if you wanna add some nuts and seeds to your salad to absorb it, go ahead. You know, but, but this is, we, you know, people focus on, well, what about GMOs and what about nonstick cookware? Okay, this is majoring in minor things. So what are your goals? And if your goals are weight loss and reversing disease, this is not the first thing I would attack. Now, I'm not saying that it may be important in some way, but, you know, I asked at the Dr. McDougall conference, it was all doctors, I said, have any of you treated a patient because of this? And nobody raised their hand. Nobody raised their hand in Kaiser. So, you know, if you want to, Throw an ounce of nuts or seeds in your salad every day to make sure you do that, that's fine. But if you're overweight and you're a food addict, this may not be the preferred food for you. And we talk about that more in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program. Nuts are not addictive in the same way as sugar and flour and alcohol, but they definitely can be a trigger food. They can perpetuate overeating, cause you to have cravings, and help, make, not help, but make it so that you can't re easily meet your weight loss goals. So. Alrighty, last question. I saved the funnest one for last because here in the United States is the day before Thanksgiving. And so Candace wants to know what am I having for Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow and will I treat myself to a piece of pumpkin pie? Well, Candace, we do our dinner tonight. Today is Wednesday that before Thanksgiving and we do a UWL approved potluck and everybody's gonna be bringing a dish. And so I only know what I'm making and I am making Jill McKeever's recipe for pasta free lasagna in the Instant Pot. One of the best recipes I've ever made and I'm actually interviewing her in 10 minutes and we're gonna shoot a video and so make sure you're on my mail list so you get that video seriously guys one of the best recipes I've had so I know that's what I'm eating I don't know if I'm gonna eat anything else because the truth is is variety is the kiss of death for the food addict the more choices the more we are tend to overeat and I don't like that feeling there's a thing called sensory specific satiety that we talk about in my interview with dr. Barbara Rolls the more choices the more you're gonna eat I don't like the feeling of overeating or being stuffed even on compliant food so I will probably just eat what I made because I know it's safe I know there's not gonna be anything in there I'm allergic to like black pepper and if there's something else I like this is my house I'll just take a little plate and I'll eat it tomorrow now will I treat myself to a piece of vegan pumpkin pie funny you should mention that because one of the gals is bringing Kathy Fisher's pumpkin pie squares and if I'm going to eat a dessert, it's going to be Kathy Fisher's or, or my own because she is one of the most talented SOS free chefs at True North. Her book, Straight Up Food, just came out. Again, I meant to bring it and show it to you. I'll show it to you next week. And she uses uh, no sugar, no oil, no salt, no flour, minimal dates, minimal nuts. So here's the thing. I don't know because if I'm full, I'm not going to eat it. I might save it and have it another time. But here's the problem with dessert. 
is that when I eat dessert, all I think about is when I'm going to eat dessert again. Now, I'm not including fresh fruit or frozen fruit sorbet as dessert. I'm talking about when you put stuff together, like some dates and nuts, and make it really, really yummy, and you call it a muffin or candy or a cookie or, or things like that. So I generally, if I'm going to eat dessert, I eat it once a year when I'm at True North under medical supervision with Dr. Goldhammer there so that if I go off the rails, he can catch me. So I don't know, you know, what I'm going to do. I, I'll let you know last next week if I did eat the pie or not, because I really don't know. Because here's the thing: I never tell myself I can't have anything. I've ne well, other than things I'm truly allergic to, which is uh, the, the legume family, black pepper, and chocolate. I'm not allergic to, but it causes migraines. So uh, other than those three things, where there's it's medical necessity, I never said I'm never going to have this again. I'm never. But but what I have noticed is that. I don't want these things and because I can't have these things and have this body. I've worked my whole life to want to be thin. I mean, that's what I wanted. And not just to be thin, but to reverse food addiction, to have that common stable brain. The thin body is the result of that. And I worked so hard to get it. I don't want to throw it away because of a, a, a piece of pie where that dopamine blast is going to last for three minutes in my brain, that pleasure, and then I'm going to suffer for the next three days. And so even when I eat a, quote, compliant dessert at True North, like my pecan pie, which is made from pecans and dates, and you can get the recipe on my webinar page, all I think about for like a week is when I'm going to have pecan pie again. That doesn't happen when I eat Hawaiian sweet potatoes or roasted Japanese sweet potatoes or kabocha squash. And I don't like that feeling of obsession of food and craving. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll let you know next week. But when you say, will I treat myself, I find that very interesting. Because, see, I don't think of these things as treats. I think, am I treating myself or am I cheating myself? Because when I go off plan, which thankfully has only been once in the last five years, I'm cheating myself of the health and the body that I deserve and that you deserve too, which you can get simply by joining us in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program. We'd love to have you if you're not already here. And if you're here, please let us know how we can support you. So thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Weight Loss Wednesday. We now have all the episodes on YouTube so that you can share them with your friends. I encourage you to please share them and to please sign up for my YouTube channel, which is called Chef AJ. I really appreciate you being here. If you celebrate Thanksgiving, I wish you a happy, healthy, abstinent, and compliant holiday. Thanks, everybody. Take care.